Hello everyone, this is an analysis and an objective supplement review on Jeff Cavalier's post-workout supplement Accelerate. You can consider this a second part of my first video where I did a supplement review on his pre-workout supplement called Excite. Uh, after receiving some requests uh, to do a supplement review on his post-workout product, I decided to do this video. I originally wasn't interested in reviewing the supplement simply because I just don't feel it's for me and I just don't feel like it's in my best interest to purchase this supplement supplement and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share with you my rationale behind that decision in hopes that I can provide you with some helpful information in case you do decide to buy this supplement or any other supplement in the future. Now a quick disclaimer I'm actually a huge fan of Jeff Cavalier. I have purchased his AX1 training program in the past and it's totally revolutionized the way I look at fitness. I have also I also subscribe to his YouTube channel and so I personally feel that he is probably one of the best if not the best best trainer that's out there. But one of the things I tried to emphasize in my first video is that you shouldn't let your personal feelings cloud your judgment when it comes to things like supplements. You really need to do some objective research to find out if the supplement has your best interest in mind and if it's going to help you attain your goals. So some of the information that may be useful to you is going to come in answering these five questions when I look at this product. The first question being, should this product be considered a protein supplement or just a post-workout supplement? Should protein supplements contain creatine? Who actually benefits from crealkaline and is it better than creatine monohydrate? Is maltodextrin a good source of simple carbs for a post-workout? And finally, is betaine and hydrous really worth it? Now one of the first things that I look at when considering a supplement is a company's claims about the product. According to the website, this product helps with muscle repair and helps build muscle and improves recovery. And you know what, you'll find that the ingredients listed here is actually going to help you with all of that. However, I do disagree with the claim that this is a convenient, high protein snack and this is why. One of the first things I do is I check out the protein yield of a protein supplement to find out how much real protein is actually in the product. So what I do is I take the grams of protein listed, which in this case is 30 grams. I multiply that by 100 and then I divide the total by the total amount of grams per serving, which is approximately 53 grams for two scoops. The end result comes out to be approximately 57%. So now, when we're talking about protein supplements, that means that out of every dollar that you spend, only 57% of that is actually spent on protein. The other 43% is whatever the manufacturer adds to that product. Now, that may or may not meet your standards, but let's take a closer look at the product. Accelerate lists that it contains 30 grams of protein, but that 30 grams is a combination of three different types of protein products each yielding a different percentage of protein. So let's take for example whey protein concentrate. Whey protein is derived from milk. Now protein is taken out and put in a concentrated form but still contains a certain amount of lactose and fats and carbs. Now a certain percentage of those fats and those carbs are taken out through a filtering process and whatever you have left over is the actual protein that you get. So a high quality protein concentrate can yield anywhere between somewhere in the range of 75% and a low quality protein concentrate can yield as low as 40%. Now if you want to learn a little bit more about that, Jeff Cavalier actually has a really good video that gives you an overview of the different types of protein products that are out there and what I'll do is I'll put a link to that video in the description box below. But I think that one of the concerns that I have when reviewing this product is that Jeff doesn't state how much of each product he's using. I mean is he using a third of each product? Is he using more of one product than the other? And I think that that's important because it helps me determine how much actual protein is within the product. Let me give you an example. Alright, so here's a supplement label from another supplement company that I frequently use. This is their whey protein powder and you'll notice that they list how much whey protein concentrate they use and how much complete protein was extracted, which in this case is about 80%. Here's another one of their products which is actually a protein blend of two different types of, tr of protein. Again, you'll notice the amount of each type of protein that they used 
and then the amount of protein they extracted from those products. When you add both of them up, it equals out to approximately 25 grams of protein. Another topic that I want to share is the fact that this supplement contains creatine and I bring this up for two reasons. Number one, we know that creatine has several nitrogen bonds that can be counted as protein in the supplement label. So what that means is out of the 30 grams that is uh, reported in the supplement label, I can't tell how much is actually dietary protein and how much of that is creatine and you see that's important and this is the reason why because if you've got let's say for example you've got 30 grams of protein that's listed within the product but five grams of that is actually reported coming from the creatine I can tell you right now that creatine and protein is not the same thing protein is a lot more important than creatine the second reason why I bring it up is because that information isn't clearly explained in the product I don't know if and how much the creatine uh, affects the amount of protein that is listed in the supplement facts now some people may have a comment saying that I'm insinuating that the protein in this supplement is spiked now let me be clear about this I am not saying that this product is spiked. I think that Jeff Cavalier has made it quite clear and evident to all of us that he lives by an ethical standard that we wish a lot of the uh, personal fitness trainers and a lot of the supplement providers would live by. I believe that the intention of Jeff Cavalier and Athlinex is to produce a product that's powerful and effective as a post-workout supplement and this is what they are producing. So as a result I look at this product as a post-workout supplement and not a high protein snack as it's listed on the website. I mean I just don't snack with uh, creatine or betaine anhydrous for that matter. Which brings me now to the type of creatine that this product uses. Uses. Accelerate uses crealkaline, which is a buffered form of creatine. And some may wonder, is this better than the traditional creatine monohydrate? And the simple answer is, is that there's no evidence to support the claim that one type of creatine is better than the other. And you have to be careful when doing your research online because a lot of the research is actually, in my opinion, flawed. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here you have a study from the Journal of the International Society of sports nutrition where they compared crealkaline with creatine monohydrate and found that crealkaline is basically no better than creatine monohydrate. They conducted this study on 36 men. Some were given crealkaline and others were given creatine monohydrate in the form of creapure which is manufactured by Alschem in Germany. Now if you pay close attention to the research and actually read it through, you'll notice that towards the end that this research was actually funded by Alschem in Germany. Alschem is actually a producer of creatine monohydrate. So to me that means that this this research is unreliable because of there there's there's a, a strong possibility of there being a conflict of interest and you see that's what we need to do when we're doing research is we need to be a little bit more astute and pay attention to things like that so that we can be better informed when we decide to go ahead and purchase a supplement so I think that the point I'm trying to make here is basically who's going to benefit from crealkaline okay because obviously we don't have any research that proves that one form of creatine is better than the other um, but crealkaline is less acidic and so therefore it will be better absorbed in your body and it will sit better in your stomach I actually have a friend who can't supplement with creatine monohydrate because he gets sick to his stomach all the time and so crealkaline is a better option for him the only other thing that you need to uh, take into account is that crealkaline is a little bit more expensive but there's no evidence to support the fact that one form of creatine is actually better than the other. Alright, but now I want to bring your attention to something in case you didn't notice it. On Jeff's website, you have a study that he cites where supplementing with creatine hydrochloride gave better benefits uh, than creatine monohydrate gave better benefits in terms of fat free mass and body fat percentages. Now, even though creatine hydrochloride is not included in his post-workout supplement, it is included in his pre-workout. Let's take a closer look at this study. According to this study, 
40 men were separated into three groups. One group was given 1.5 grams of creatine hydrochloride. Another group was given 5 grams of creatine hydrochloride. And a third group was given 5 grams of creatine monohydrate. And although there were no significant differences in strength and performance in all the groups, the group that received 5 grams of creatine hydrochloride showed significant differences in body fat percentage and fat-free mass. Now a couple of things I wanted to point out that I think are important. Let's say you're, you look at this research and you want to be part of that creatine hydrochloride group that showed significant differences in body composition. You have to realize that they receive 5 grams of creatine hydrochloride. If you supplement with Excite and then supplement with Accelerate uh, pre and post workout respectively, you're not getting the same kind of creatine. You're getting two different kinds of creatine and that's not what the study shows. The study shows that um, body composition was significantly different than all other creatine groups in the group that received 5 grams of creatine hydrochloride. The other point that I wanted to make is this, that things uh, look much different when you're looking at things in a lab than you are in real life. So in other words, you could look at the group, at the creatine uh, hydrochloride group that received 5 grams and say, wow, they've got significant amount of uh, difference in regards to their body composition. And you can look at the creatine monohydrate group and say, yeah, there's significant differences there as well. But in real life, when you look at someone, you're going to look at the creatine hydrochloride group and you're going to go, wow, that's a, that's a huge improvement. You're going to look at the creatine monohydrate group and you're going to say the exact same thing because to the naked eye, really, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. Um, I mean, take a look at the differences between the two groups. It shows that both groups actually had really huge improvements in terms of body composition. And the only reason why this study says that creatine hydrochloride group uh, was significant is because there was obviously less water retention. Um, besides that, this test was only conducted in four weeks. We know that uh, for creatine monohydrate to really uh, take effect, it's got to last for more than a month. And you don't have to load creatine monohydrate uh, in the beginning like they do. I mean, you can if you want it to start working faster, but it's not necessary. I'm hoping that you're going to actually work out for longer than a month. Um, so, you know, as long as you just take creatine monohydrate consistently on a daily basis and all you need to do is take 5 grams, you're going to see significant improvements not just in your, in your strength and in your performance but in your body composition as well. And I just personally feel that, you know, to the naked eye, uh, you really are not going to be able to tell a, a huge amount of difference between creatine hydrochloride and creatine monohydrate. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm some sort of huge creatine monohydrate uh, proponent. Listen, creatine monohydrate, uh, crealkaline, creatine hydrochloride, those are all great creatine products. Um, and, uh, you know, it's really up to you uh, what is your preference on what you want to use. The only reason I convey this information is for my subscribers, just so that you can be better informed. That's the only reason why. Now, in regards to maltodextrin, the question becomes, is it a good uh, fast digesting carb for a post-workout? And the answer is simply yes, for the most part. Most of us can take maltodextrin without any concern. I think that if you suffer from some sort of inv inflammatory uh, bowel condition like Crohn's disease, you definitely want to stay away from maltodextrin because it can have some adverse effects on your condition. Maltodextrin is an artificial carbohydrate uh, which uh, is derived from a variety of uh, starches uh, including things like corn, wheat, uh, rice, potatoes, um, and the glycemic index is pretty high. It's like 85 to well over 100. Um, so it's a lot more than table sugar. Table sugar's uh, glycemic index is like uh, 65. So it's definitely something that will spike up your insulin. And that's something that uh, some of you may want to consider. And uh, it's definitely something that's fast digesting. Uh, now the thing is, I've read some research and it does help endurance athletes uh, when taken before 
uh, and even during exercise. I guess the turnoff for me is that it, it's also used as a cheap filler. I mean, you can find it in candy, you can find it in beer. I mean, you even find it in some products like soap and laundry detergent. So for me, I really can't look at this as a serious ingredient to any, any uh, bodybuilding supplement that I would be taking. Now, the tradition in bodybuilding is that you want some fast digesting carbs right after your workout so that you can replenish your glycogen stores and supposedly these fast digesting carbs will also spike your insulin which will also spike your protein uptake and you know I, other than hearsay I don't necessarily know if that's if there is any real valid research to that and uh, that's something that I guess I'm going to have to follow up on which finally brings me to betaine and hydrus and is it really worth it to buy supplements with this ingredient and the simple answer is is that no one knows for sure nobody knows hundred percent how effective betaine and hydrus is uh, basically we're facing two problems when it comes to determining the effectiveness of this supplement the first problem of course being the lack of available research out there in regards to this supplement. Now, if you wanted to do some investigating on your own, uh, betaine anhydrous is also known as trimethylglycine. And what you're going to find is very limited research that finds favorable benefits using this supplement. If anything, most of the most of the research out there that actually finds favorable results uh, with betaine and hydrus is usually associated with Danisco or DuPont Nutrition. Now, DuPont Nutrition is a producer of betaine and hydrus. So, to me, the research is unreliable. And unfortunately, four out of the five studies that Jeff cites on his website are all funded by DuPont Nutrition. And the fourth one on the list I can't get into unless I pay for the full text, which I'm not going to do. Now, somebody may come to me and say, look, you're being way too stingy, unreasonable, or even anal about this conflict of interest thing. And the truth is, is that I just don't trust a daggone soul on this earth. I mean, listen, we live in the type of world where people will literally sell you poison to make a buck. And the more publicly traded a company is, the worse it is, because now their interests are for their stockholders and not for you and me as consumers. The second problem that we have is that it's very difficult to listen to anybody who has great things to say about betaine and hydrus because the typical bodybuilder is going to stack up betaine and hydrus with other supplements that have been proven to work. So for example, a typical person would probably take caffeine and L-tyrosine as their pre-workout to enhance their focus and give them energy. They'll probably also include some L-citrulline malate in there um, to enhance their performance. And then on top of that, as, as a post-workout, they'll take their creatine, they'll take their beta-alanine. Uh, obviously, those supplements will also enhance your performance in the long term and also will take uh, protein and that's going to help you with muscle building and so when you stack betaine and hydrus on top of all of that how can you even tell it's even working you can't now let's talk about some facts in regards to this product you're going to be getting 1250 milligrams of betaine and hydrus with the accelerate post-workout supplement if you stack that with the excite uh, pre-workout supplement you're also going to be getting 1250 milligrams of betaine and hydrus there as well and that seems to be consistent uh, when you're when you're looking at the research in regards to how they actually supplement that they supplement with 1250 milligrams of betaine and hydrus before and after the workout now when I was doing my supplement review on excite I had stated that the betaine and hydrus on that supplement uh, seems to be underdosed when looking at it as a standalone supplement and somebody made a comment on there stating that I need to do more research because it is not underdose if you stack it with the post-workout because it also has betaine and hydrus. Now, let me tell you how I feel about a comment like that. That's exactly the type of collaboration that we need to have on YouTube because remember, none of these supplements are regulated and so really it's up to us to try to count on one another to identify something that's wrong or sketchy or even something, identify something that's really good because that way we're able to help each other out and we're able to hold these supplement companies accountable so I hope I was able to provide you with some helpful information and I will conclude by saying this some supplements will work for some people sometimes good diet and nutrition work for all people all the time every time see you at the next video